Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog, a hate story. And oh my god, Hyane is still so cute! Uh, 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 so, what can I do for you? Nothing, I just wanted to look at your adorable face. Okay, bye. Okay, so there are no new messages. <laughs> there are, um, no messages are unread, so... I need to get someone's comments on something, but I don't know what, so I just need to go through them. I really, I don't even remember. Like, I don't even know where to look. Okay, okay I remember she doesn't want to talk about these. I remember that very clearly. Okay, here we go, I just cut out a few minutes of me searching, and I found this. She will comment upon this. Sorry, what is this? By example, let me refresh my memory on what this was. I've given up on any attempts at convincing the main family, uh, the main branch family to get their act together is clearly speaking reason to any kind of any kind of that pack of idiots as a fool's errand. Uh, that's from Smith Kyung Sam. Okay. Uh, Kyung Sam. I've looked through the block that was locked down, but I'm not really seeing anything of note that's related to him. Well, there's that one... L that one letter from Sang Min that was addressed to Kyung Sam's father, Dai Ho. You've already read that, though. Basically, it just... Doesn't really seem like he was very important. Or really ever did anything but complain about the drama in Smith, Sang Min, and Oh So Jin's house. I guess all the other noble families were pretty much as dumb as mine ever was. <laughs> That's pretty depressing. No kidding, that is. Hmm. Alright, unfortunately, that doesn't, that doesn't give me anything new to read. What about this? Oh, here we go. Okay, I guess we have a block of text that she hasn't commented upon. Um, still mourn him. Oh, yeah, this is, um... This is her asking for help, right? Yes, help me out. The dowry, right? Yep. Alright, let's see what she says about that. Um, I'm really sorry. Please don't get mad, but I don't really understand what you're looking for. Maybe I'm just... Oh, yeah, she's already said that before. Okay. So I guess... She... Hmm. Letter to saying Min. Maybe I've already tried these. I feel like I've already tried these. Yeah, she's gonna say the same thing, right? Yeah. Hmm. It's weird that they even present me with the option. Alright, let me... I'll come back when I find something. Okay, I switched over to Mute, and she apparently has something to tell me. What is it, Mute? Well, you've seen most everything about the Smith family now, except the most scandalous stuff. I'm sort of wondering what you think of their fall. Well, I mean... I... Hold on, let me save it, just in case. Another case where I'm not exactly sure what these options mean. They had it coming. I mean, it's not as if I think they deserve it, but given this information, it's pretty inevitable. It shouldn't have happened. I guess that's the closest option. I mean, it's understandable that it did happen, given what happened. But, okay, yeah, it should have happened. Yeah, I know, but after Sang Chung died, well... With him gone, it's no surprise things fell apart. Anyway, regardless of whether you think it should have happened or not, it was a pretty terrible thing to happen to what used to be the greatest noble family. And certainly they didn't deserve to be first brought down by the Kim family, then murdered by the Kim daughter. Oops, I used my scroll wheel accidentally. What do you mean, murdered by the Kim daughter? Maybe it's... I don't want to say that Sang Chung was lucky. That's not true. If he was around, maybe things would have turned out better. He always had a way of making things perfect. Still, I'd rather he be killed by his own habit than by that girl. What do you mean? He deserved better than what he got, but it would have been even worse if not for that, is I guess what I'm saying. I hadn't really thought about it that way before. Really, were he around, that's totally what he'd say. Practically imagine his voice, even. The drink will inevitably kill you, then women will inevitably kill you, so I'd rather take the one that isn't always bitter. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Mute knew him very well. 
Well, anyway, that's enough of all that. Alright, well, unfortunately, there's still no unread messages. Um, so what is she going to comment about? Oh, apparently she'll comment about this. Or wait, is that Grey? Has she already mentioned that? So you want to talk... Okay. So you want to talk about Queen Ryu Chehua, huh? She was kind of more than just my queen. It's... Well, I guess I have to explain my own position for it to make sense. So, like, yeah, I appear to be just a woman, but that's just my personal appearance. I'm actually, you know, a computer program. So when I say I was, well, still am, really, in charge of security for the whole ship, I mean it. I was an actual official. I outranked pretty much everyone on the ship, save for the Emperor, and, of course, by extension, his primary wife. So while I might have reported directly to the Emperor in theory, and I did with others in the past, Emperor Ryu Inho chose to let that sort of thing go through his wife instead. What this is all getting at, for all intents and purposes, she was my real mistress, not him. We were pretty close. Well, as close as you can be as close as you can be to your better, anyway. I liked her a lot. She was actually really intelligent for a woman, and was surprisingly tough for a noble. Well, <laughs> She was actually really intelligent for a woman. That's a glowing endorsement. I know, I know, that doesn't really sound attractive. But trust me, with her, it was pretty okay. She managed to be great while still knowing her place. Wonderful, Mute. Wonderful. So yeah, like I said, I liked her a lot. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. This is my point. I remember those admonitions because I actually helped her write them. I mean, I didn't write a single word or anything, but she asked me for advice. Mostly, she was just modest. So let me see, I really want you to get the right impression of her, you know? She kind of wrote a lot. Well, nobody's perfect. Wait, how is writing a lot a flaw? Is, is that supposed to be a character flaw? Writing too much? And don't let that cloud your judgment of her, though, alright? I mean, I'm not impressed either, but at least it means you'll be able to see what she was like. Alright, I've got three for you to see. Well, one's kind of actually about me, but still, it shows you how good a person she was. If you want to see the rest of the admonitions, let me know. I can do that too. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, there's one in block ten. You know, I'm going to write this down so I know where to take um, Hyane when I probably inevitably need her comment. So I know where the latest ones are. Alright, The Pale Bride's Marriage by Ryu Chehua. My fear of the Pale Bride, it seems, was unfounded. In my letter to her, I wrote... Wait. Have I read this? I... No, I guess... This seems vaguely familiar, but I don't think I have read this. I mean, it said new, so I guess I couldn't have. Anyway. My fear of the Pale Bride, it seems, was unfounded. In my letter to her, I wrote that I was not jealous. Oh, that's why I think I've read this. I've probably read her letter from the other side. Okay. A lie, of course. As queen, it is true that I have authority over any of my husband's other wives. But that authority does certainly not extend to his affections. Especially since she is a beautiful woman of only 15 years. And I am a withered old lady 20 years her senior. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. 15, 25, 35. She... She was 35 years old, and she's calling herself a withered old lady? What? Do these people age faster than normal people? There's no way she is a withered old lady at the age of tw 35. Yeah, I mean, what? Huh. Okay. Um, either there's something weird going on with their aging, or she has a very, very low opinion of herself. Anyway. I would be a fool not to be jealous. And yet I am not. Until she officially married my husband, I had only seen her briefly, at the formal interview. Aside from her beauty, she had made hardly any impression. But now she is living in my house, and I have seen more of her while she is not busy attending to the Emperor, and I realize now I have no cause for jealousy that is any fault of hers. 
She hasn't spoken a single word to me, and only looks at me from a distance. At first I mistook this for arrogance, as though she thought me unworthy of approaching. I realized soon that is not so. I see no smugness in her eyes, nor do I see happiness, nor sadness, nor anything else. She is afraid of me. Not the sort of fear that would show in her eyes, the sort of fear that would paralyze or leave her on edge. It is hardly noticeable at all, and yet I can tell. Her fear is that of resignation, the sort of fear where one simply waits for what one believes inevitable. Whatever it is, she thinks I will do to her. She is not afraid that I will be jealous. She knows it, and is simply waiting for the consequences. I cannot be jealous of a woman like that. I feel for her. I want her to feel welcome. I want to give her the hope she has clearly lost back. It is not out of jealousy that I say I earnestly want her to understand how lucky she is. When last, when last I saw her, I took her aside and said, Please, you do not have to fear me. If you ever wish to talk to me, please do find me. She said nothing. But she did smile a little. I have seen her smile before, but only in a hollow way, where the mouth moves but no emotion stirs in the eyes. And this was not that kind. I can hardly say what the twinkle in her eyes meant, but at least I don't think it was resignation. I do hope she talks to me soon, for her own sake. Alright, where and what other blocks are the other ones? Block 4. Alright, morning dress from Ryu Che Hua. Normally, my conversations with Mute are of a rather frivolous nature. Gossip in the affairs of some of the more important noble houses, as well as her trying to bait whatever she is able out of me. While I think such a flow of information is valuable, so I might pass news to my husband and he might not other uh, that he might not otherwise hear, I would not consider her attitude to have any resemblance to seriousness. Previously, I had assumed that this was simply impossible due to her nature. While I do not really understand how, despite her explanations, anyone could live inside a computer screen, she, <laughs> she says that she is an artificial person. I had assumed that perhaps her absence of a soul prevented her from feeling serious emotions. Ordinarily, she wears incredibly bold, colorful clothing, her golden hair absurdly well adorned. For the past month, however, she has been uncharacteristically humble, wearing an unappealing brown dress with her hair undecorated. My curiosity got the better of me at last. Please, I have wondered, why are you so attired? It is unlike you. I asked. She gave me an odd look. Huh? She asked. It's morning dress. That much was obvious, and not particularly the thrust of my question. Did you not tell me you were thousands of years old, and that you have no family? For what reason are you wearing mourning? She gave me an annoyed look. A friend of mine died, okay? No, I don't have a family. It's always been just me. But this guy was a really good friend, and he definitely deserves that kind of respect, she said. We were super close. Do you wish to tell me about him? I asked. She gave me another look that I couldn't quite read, but seemed somehow sad. Nah, she said. I don't want to talk about it. Not now. I miss him too much. Hey, I'm going to go now, okay? I'll talk to you later. I said goodbye to her, and she disappeared from the computer screen, but as she did, I could have sworn that I saw her start to cry. Wait, is the artificial intelligence actually capable of... Hmm. Interesting. It seems she has a bit more depth than I thought. I'm thinking if they can be that emotional, if artificial intelligence... If an artificial intelligence can be, can be that emotional, then... What are the chances they could survive without any mental problems when being completely alone and without any contact with other humans for hundreds and hundreds of years? I don't know. I mean, they seem fine. Anyway. Well? Yeah. She probably did see me cry. I had a really hard time talking about it then, especially not to my mistress. I really didn't mean to be so vulnerable in front of her. And that just isn't proper. Kind of embarrassing, really. I'm sure you've already guessed, but yeah, the man in question was Smith Sang Chung. Strictly speaking, there was no real mourning obligation. It's not like I was really family. Still, 
The man was the closest thing to a husband to me. I mean, don't take this the wrong way. It's hardly scandalous. I'm not a real woman. I'm just a computer. But we had a really close relationship. So yeah, I thought it'd be appropriate if I honored him. Like he was. He never married, so it's not like anyone else would. I just figured, the man deserved that much. He totally deserved at least that much. <sighs> Alright, I think that's the end of the new stuff to read. Yeah, so let's go get Xian A's opinion on this. Alright, let's switch the AI. Disable mute. Enable AI Hyun A. Now activated, quit. And let's go. Alright, so it's block 10 and block 4. I never read her letters at the time. I couldn't. I know she read them to me eventually, but I was just numb to that sort of talk at that point. Now they're just hard for me to read. Yeah, I bet they would be. Alright, block four is the next one. Which one was it? This one. Morning dress. Um. Oh god, she's gonna tell me she doesn't know what I'm looking for. What she's looking for. God damn it. Or what I'm looking for. <sighs> well, in that case, what do I do? Alright, I guess I'll come back when I find something. Okay, it seems Mute has something to say about this message. Right, so her admonitions then. Well, when your parents do find you a wife, your mother probably has a set of these prepared for her, assuming she knows how to write, at least. Anyway, the point is, it's considered fairly typical for a new gentleman's bride to get a series of verses explaining what will be expected of them as a wife, as well as just friendly advice. Well, the reason why these ones aren't written in verse is pretty simple, I guess. It's because... <coughs> Damn it, something stuck in my throat. <coughs> Ah, there we go. It's pretty simple, I guess. It's because the Queen Ryu Che Hua had absolutely no ear for it. Oh. Honestly, personally, I think that's pretty endearing. But she was really worried about the Pale Bride, since she was a younger, prettier girl for her husband and all, so she wanted to make a really strong impression. I suggested to her that she do what she was good at and just write them in prose. Since if she was as uneducated as I thought she would be, and she was, it's not like she'd know any better anyway. Well, I guess that backfired a little, since it turned out she... that she was so uneducated that she didn't actually even know any letters. Whoops. Anyway, here. Let me just give you a giant info dump and pass along all the admonitions for you to see yourself. Well, this should be interesting. Alright, where did you put the info dump? There it is! Wow. Okay, block 10. <laughs> Marital admonitions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7. And these were all written or submitted on the same day, okay. <clears throat> to the woman who will marry my husband. As you are doubtlessly aware, it is traditional for a noble man's mother to write poetic admonitions to be sent to the bride-to-be before she enters the family, explaining the circumstances and proffering advice to her. Sadly, your mother-in-law is long since departed, leaving the responsibility in my hands. I never had any such letters sent to me, for reasons which I'll explain soon enough, and I have furthermore studied verse only enough to know that I, uh, that I am unable to write it well. I hope you do not think less of me, young pale bride for addressing these letters in plain speech instead. Rather, pay attention to my words over my form. 
and please do not be hasty in erasing these letters after reading, for your own sake. I hope you find the advice and knowledge I will impart on you useful. Yeah, like I said, I suggested she just wrote them, uh, she just wrote them in straight pro- pro ugh, my god, I can't talk. I suggested she just wrote them in straight prose. Wait, shouldn't that be, I suggested she just write them in straight prose? Wrote is past tense, shouldn't that be write? Hmm. As for the reason why she didn't get anything from her own mother-in-law, well, that's pretty complicated. There were kind of some issues in the family there. You'll see what I mean if you read on. Alright, Marital Admonitions Part 2. To the woman who will marry my husband. As you are no doubt aware, the Ryu family has an extremely long and proud history. Every man to hold the title Captain and Emperor has always been of our house. And you are to make sure that continues for another generation. The name goes all the way back to the ancient times. Mythology speaks of a Captain Ryu who had control of even the ship's movement through the stars themselves. Such things remain far removed from everyday life, but it is important to understand the significance of the house. End of the title that your first son will eventually come to inherit. Well, if that sounds like a kind of simplistic explanation, you have to understand it's not really like anyone had the frame of reference to really get space travel. Even I only sort of barely understand it, and I'm the ship's computer. Imagine what it must be like for some barely educated woman in society that doesn't really understand its technology, having only ever lived inside the ship. Yeah, that would be... yeah, I get that. So her description of the Captain and Emperor's role is, well, it's a little mythologizing, okay, but it's pretty much accurate, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Part 3. To the woman- yeah, blah blah blah. <laughs> it is an obvious matter that I do have the same family name as my husband. The official story, if you have not already heard, is that we are cousins, making our marriage improper and less than ideal, but somewhat acceptable given the circumstances. At the time, there were no noble daughters who had not already been promised or given away in marriage. And obviously a girl- and obviously a girl of any lesser upbringing could not possibly be suit suitable as a queen. Hence, cousins would simply have to do. Strictly speaking, this is all true. The part about there not being any noble daughters available is not a misrepresentation. And as far as any official genealogy is concerned, the Emperor is the son of my father's brother. The part which you may not speak of openly is that he is the old Emperor's son only by adoption. As far as blood goes, my husband is also my brother. As children, we never lived together, and it would... Of, wait, why is this cut off? That's weird. The sentence is cut off before the end of the page, even. We never lived together, and it would, of course, have been strictly improper to have spent any time together at that age. I would never say anything such as that my husband actually arranged for there to be no noble daughters to marry out of his desire to marry me. That would, of course, be a rather bold move to accuse an emperor of such. But you may wish to consider what the implications might be if such a thing truly did happen. I leave it to you to decide whether or not such a thing is plausible. All I, all, I, ugh. all I will say is that, despite our marriage being one of necessity, my husband has always been very fond of me. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, that's... Okay, what's he su what she's suggesting? That is gross and wrong and definitely, well... I don't think a bold move even begins to cover what she's saying. I feel bad saying this. I liked her. We were close. She was a good woman. But my real master was the Emperor, and it would be a disservice to give her a pass on this. She was way over the line here. I think it's damned irresponsible of her to, to have even considered telling the Pale Bride that. Why would she even need to know? Anyway, I don't even buy the implication. I don't think it's even true. I don't know if you've noticed, but the Magungwa's birth rates are, well, it's not good. They had been bad for generations, but they were just getting worse and worse. Among noble families, they weren't even at replacement rate anymore. 
I have no idea why. Nobody really ever wanted to acknowledge it. So what I'm saying is, even ignoring the fact that he wanted and... The fact that he wanted and her suggestion is just wrong, I don't think the Emperor would have to contrive it so that there weren't any noble daughters of proper age. Right, because the birth rate is so low that... There's just not enough people. The simple fact of the matter is... Ugh, that sort of incest ended up being necessary, and apparently didn't help, since even she couldn't deliver a son anyway. No awful and inappropriate theories are necessary. That's true, but I would trust her word over guesses. I'm sure Hyane is going to have some interesting things to say about this. Part 4. As for responsibilities, your burden will be quite light. You will, of course, be expected to be the model of feminine virtue, but truthfully, I do not expect you will have very much trouble with this. So long as you keep your head down, avoid scandal, and keep quiet, that will be more than suffice. Uh, that will more than suffice. As far as the day-to-day -day is concerned, you will have nothing to concern yourself with, as this is the royal family you are marrying into. As queen, I run the management of the house's affairs, and will not require any assistance from you in that regard. As part of a royal concubine's demonstration of modesty, you will have to share my own personal servant, and will not have one of your own. While you will not have to be responsible for all housework, be modest and do not remain idle at her expense. You are expected to be as unseen as the servants, and to be voiceful only in the most only in the most moderation. Do not speak harshly to your servant, and be appreciative of what she does, and not incompassionate. Your one sole responsibility will be spending as much time with the Emperor as it takes to produce a son. After you give birth, you will not need to worry about raising him. I will be there to make sure that all is arranged f all is arranged for. Simply make her husband happy, keep out of sight, and give him a son, and you'll have no more to worry yourself with. Okay, hold on. Didn't she say she's... like, she can barely write? Um... Verse only... Uh, I've studied it. Verse only enough to know what, uh, that I am unable to write it well. I hope you do not think of less of me. Like, I mean... She's supposed to be really bad at writing, right? But these are extremely well written. So, what? Hmm. Well, I guess I'll grant the Pale Bride one thing. You never had to worry about her speaking out of turn. Really, at the time, she seemed like the perfect virtuous wife, right up until she snapped at the end. I know, how do you even reconcile that, right? How can someone seem so close to being the pinnacle of feminine virtue, and then turn out to be so completely messed up? I still don't get it, not even slightly. I still have no idea what she's talking about snapping. But I'm probably gonna find out soon. Alright, five. And the virtues which you are expected to demonstrate are simply those expected of any woman. And given your noble upbringing, I will not condescend to treat you as if you do not already know them quite well. Like, like, I mean, hold on. People who don't know how to write very well, do not write extremely complex sentences. As this. This is one sentence here. This is really complex. The virtues which you are expected to demonstrate are simply those expected of any woman. And, given your noble upbringing, I will not condescend to treat you as if you do not already know them quite well. That is an extremely complicated sentence. This woman knew how to write very well. Anyway, you are expected to be quiet and obedient, to me as well as obviously to our husband. Perchance... I mean, like, even her vo vocabulary is really good. Condescend, perchance. Perchance you are scalded, trust my judgment as your elder. I will never act out of anger or spite. If scalded by your husband, always respond with a smile, for your relationship with him must always be warm, and he is a wise man. I do not, however, anticipate such things will be problems. He told me of the interview in which he spoke to you, and had nothing to report at all on your manner of speech. So I trust it was entirely proper and polite. In light of that, I will say nothing further of the matter. 
As far as ritual obligations go, you have none, save for following in my lead. Both your mother and father-in-law are long dead, so you have no further obligations to them. I had trouble adjusting at first, but I anticipate nothing could, uh, nothing you could be surprised by. Yeah, she's a very good writer. Alright, number six. I will not tell you to avoid court politics entirely, so long as you do not cause trouble. But I will suggest that you simply watch from a distance. The temptation may exist to meddle, especially if you ever talk to the artificial girl, Mute, who lives inside our computer. <laughs> she is a gossip and a friend of the Smith noble family, and is responsible for revealing much of what they try to keep hidden. She may seem fickle, but she does not belong to the House of Ryu first and foremost. Um, uh, but she does belong to the House of Ryu first and foremost, and is quite loyal. Nevertheless, meddling is not in your best interests. Do not play politics, and not only for our sake, or for the sake of being a virtuous wife, but for the sake of your own family as well. They will receive favor, not through any scheming on your part, but through our husband's will. Entertain yourself with gossip if you wish, so long as you keep quiet about it, but stay out of politics. In the end, you will manage to go much further if you rely only on rewards for being a good wife. She's right in what she instructed the Pale Bride, but man, I don't really agree with her assertion here. I wasn't a gossip. Look, yeah, I'm a social creature, of course. That's my job. I'm glad that my mistress valued me, but I don't really like the way she's characterizing me as just being some chattery, gossiping woman. I was always way better than that. I wish she'd have realized it. Alright. Let's get Hyane over here. Hyane, what do you think about this? Disable mute. Enable Hyane. And here we go. Alright, let's get her side of the story. I believe I've already seen this, right? Yeah. Okay. Nothing to say about that one. Nothing to say about that one. Does she really not have anything to say? Does she really not have anything to say about any of that? Are you kidding me? Okay. Really? Alright, I'll be back when something happens. Alright, apparently Mute has something to say about this unsent letter. Well, she admits that it's pretty messed up, at least. Sure, she was a lonely old woman, but... I don't know. I just don't get it. It's not as if she's wrong about the whore's looks. I mean, all the men seem to find her really attractive. Well, whatever, I'm repeating myself at this point. Totally don't get it, you get the picture. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. Alright, well, I've already read that. Let's hope there's more here. I thought I already got her comments on this stuff, but apparently I haven't. Oh, my feelings are so confused. Uh, yeah, I'll say. Incredibly confused by the sound of it. I guess that's what you'd expect from an uneducated whore, though. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. Thank you for your lovely comments, Mute. An uneducated whore. I can see you have a lot of respect for her. Nothing here. <laughs> yeah, let's see what she says about this. 
Man, how's that reverse? Really, it's not the translation, I assure you. It's not exactly any better in the original Korean. Can you believe that was actually written by someone who had studied poetry for years? Seriously? Uh, well, I didn't read it. I mean, I originally read it, but that was a long time ago. I don't remember exactly what it says. Uh, I don't remember. Can I go back? I can't go back. I, I don't remember thinking it was terrible, so... Maybe not for what it is. Maybe you might find it successful at being arousing. That's fair enough. But with all due respect, I don't think that's really enough to make a good poem. I don't know much about the subject, but I mean, come on. There's a reason why men's poetry is what gets studied and taught, and women's poetry is just used for seduction. You need real sincerity. You need someone who actually understands love. <laughs> what? Okay, whatever, mute. It's titillating, sure, but it's crap. Anyway, though, I guess you want to see the other poem the horror wrote for her? Yes. Right, of course. Here, have it. If you found the last one arousing, well... It's not any good, but I'm sure you'll be entertained, at least. Sorry I can't at least give you the one that was meant for a man, though. That's all the horror's poetry for Sojin. She didn't seem to write down the ones she did for anyone else. So that's all you can get. Okay, apparently the other one is supposed to be titillating. Hold on, actually. Was this one supposed to be arousing? My art is that of lies and lying, and of both I have much practice. I've said to men, I love you falsely. I've suffered pain, but smiled in pleasure. But the hardest lie I've ever told was that I could live without you. That's what? That's not titillating at all. That It's sweet, but that's not titillating or sexy or arousing. I have no idea what she's talking about. And yeah, that poem is not bad at all. I mean, I don't know anything about poetry, but... I mean, it's not roses are red, violets are blue. This poetry sucks, so fuck you. Or something like that, so... <laughs> Seems fine, I guess. Anyway, pretty flower. Is this one longer? How's, how's this? Oh, she has something to say. Pretty flower, who could plant you, then abandon you in your bed? Each day I stop to admire your aroma. Will your gardener mind? Each night I pluck my own petals, but dream of yours in bloom. That also doesn't seem arousing or seductive at all. It just seems sweet. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious what you're saying, right? Who could plant you, then abandon you in her bed? That's her husband, right? A relationship was fine to begin with, but then her husband didn't pay any attention to her, and he was a piece of shit. Will your gardener mind? Obviously, the gardener is the husband. Dream of yours in bloom. I mean, it's pretty... Yeah. It's nice. It's sweet, it's straightforward, and I would not call it arousing at all. Yes. Well, there you have it. That's it for the scandalous and sordid story of the noble wife Sojin and her husband's horror. I keep going back and forth on how to feel about the whole thing. On the one hand, I feel pretty bad for Sojin. It should have never had... No, it should have never had to sink to that for her. On the other hand, well, it's not like she didn't make, uh, still make her decisions for herself. I'd be wrong to just cover it up, right? I respect her, but at the end of the day, she still did do unspeakable things with the whore. I'm just kind of conflicted, especially now that she's long gone. Well, anyway, so what do you think of all of that? <laughs> oh, it was awful and it was hot. Are those seriously my only options? <laughs> well, uh, hold, I need to save it again. I'm not. Once again, I'm not sure about these. Like, it was hot, it was awful. What do you mean? Like. Okay, parts of it actually were very arousing. 
but other parts were extremely unarousing and very disturbing. It was awful. Does that mean, like, I think what she did was wrong? Or does that mean the whole thing was awful for everyone because it was a really shitty situation? Like, why? I don't exactly know what these mean. I think it was awful is what I'm going for. Let me feel this one out and see if that's right. I know, right? No matter how you look at it, that's true for sure. Yeah. Watching a good woman fall like that, well... You get the idea, I'm sure. Anyway, that's all what I want you to keep in mind. Stories like that, even the messed up ones. And there's a reason why the last one dates to the year 322. It's not that their affair came to a conclusion. It's that they just both died. Wait, what? How? So yeah. Even if it is one hell of a story, it's one that ended completely abruptly. Just remember that, alright? Uh... Were they murdered? How did they die? Hmm. Oh wait, she has the same comment as she did for the last one. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I could try to get Hyane's opinion on that, but I don't think she'd have one. Yeah, I think that's the end of the... information between Hannah and Oh Sojin. Alright, so that was block... what? What block was that? Was that two? Yeah, it's block two. Alright, let's troll through block three with Mute. I will be right back when I find something. Okay, here we go. She has a comment for Visit from Sang Chung. Uh, from Oh Sojin. Oh yeah! What do I do? That's the one where he wanted to see, uh... He wanted to see the girl, but she didn't want to let him in. Okay. Man, reading that, I just can't believe that's her. She used to be so timid. Thinking of me as having a shocking, crass manner or being afraid of her brother-in-law at the door? Well, it's all what I expected from her at the time. She just changed a whole lot as she got older. Well... Honestly, maybe not as much as I thought. She might have gotten bolder behind her husband's back, but in front of him, that never really changed much. Well, what do you think? Should she have listened to Sang Chung about being less differential to her husband? Uh, I don't... God, I don't know. I Honestly, I have no idea. Sure. Well, of course. Sang Chung wasn't wrong, you know. Sure, she's his wife, but absolutely no part of her responsibilities involve getting walked all over. Frankly, it would have been better for her if she had stood up to him a bit. Are you sure? It wouldn't have surprised me if he just beat her. I mean, didn't... Someone... I remember someone mentioned that, you know, my husband... Like, has something like, I rarely ever raised a fist to me or whatever? Raised a hand to me? Which implied that he had been physically abusive? I don't know if it was him and Oh Sojin. I think it might have been. I don't, I don't, I can't remember. If her husband wasn't being satisfied at home, well, I mean, I feel bad for her, but he was totally right. It is her fault. <laughs> what? Either way, well, she did change, in some ways. In some ways, not for the better, as, you've, as you've seen with her relationship with that whore. That's why it amazes me so much, rereading something that old, knowing what she could later sink to. Ah, oh, well. Hmm. Legendary Temper, please have more comments. Nope. Come on, mute. Come on. Come on. There we go. Drag himself to death. Of course I was on the verge of tears. He... 
He meant a lot to me. I mean, you know, I'm just a computer. He wasn't family or anything, and it's not like I have the body for that kind of relationship. But still, he was the closest thing I had to a husband. We had a really close relationship. I really did love him. I definitely can't forgive her for not sincerely mourning his death, or not taking it seriously. He was a great man. I... I'm just disappointed in her. It really is an awful confession. He really did deserve much better. So much better. <sighs> Alright, that is block three. Move on to block four. A pack of idiots. Oh, here we go. Look, you already know what I think of Smith Kyung Sam, who is a piece of shit. Don't listen to a word he says. That isn't what Smith Sang Chung was like at all. His death was a tragedy, and for a lesser man to make light of it? It's appalling is what it is. Can you believe his nerve? Fine, Sang Chung never married, and he liked to drink maybe a little more than was good for him. But he was a great man. Clever, charming, filial, and respectful. I... Look, he wasn't perfect. He was as damn close as you could get, though. Do you want to know what he was really like? Don't listen to a single word from the likes of Kyung Sam. Here's a more fitting depiction. I've added some logs that actually do him justice. You should really read them. I still don't know what filial means. You know what? I'm gonna find out what filial means right now. I think I can do this without stopping the game, right? Yes, I can. Okay, come with me. Define filial. Of or do from a son or daughter. What? Denoting the generation or generations after the parental gar generation. Of or do from a son or daughter. Synonyms. Daughterly. Wait, so wait, what the fuck does it mean? I don't get it. What? Hold on, Merriam-Webster. Uh, of, relating to, or befitting a son or daughter. Having or assuming the relation of a child or offspring. So... I think that means, so filial, that means like, a good son or daughter, basically? A good child? Like someone who, I don't know, respects their parents and does their proper role? Is that what filial means? I think so. Hmm. Yeah, I think it basically just means a good child. Alright. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. She said she unlocked documents. Where? No messages are unread. What are you, what are you talking about, Mute? I guess they've already been unlocked. Okay. Well, let's keep going through here. By example, nothing. Morning dress. Wait, have I already done this? That's what I just did, right? Yeah, I think so. Letter to Sang Min. Nope. Come on, come on. Response to saying hi. Nope. Letter to Sang Min 2. Nope. Well, I guess this one probably isn't going to have anything. Saying hi too. Nope. Come on. I don't understand why there isn't just like a mark next to all of the notes saying the AI has a response to this or something like that. It would save me a lot of time. Alright, well, I'll be back when I find something. Okay, I found something like two seconds later. The month of good fortune. Don't even remember what that was about. So, like, you've talked to her a fair bit, right? What do you think of hyun -A? <laughs> She's insane. She's, <laughs> She's not even close to insane. Well, I don't hate her, that's true. Seriously? You can stand her? Did she tell you about the whole mass murder thing, or did she conveniently leave that out? 
she didn't. No, of course not. I'm sure even that awful bitch is ashamed of what she did. Or maybe she just wanted to impress you. I don't think most men are turned on by that kind of lunacy. So you can see why she'd hide that. It's probably better if you don't hear it from me, though. I don't think you'd even believe it. Better to ask her yourself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give you an entire block that's full of nothing but questions for her. <laughs> okay, that should jumpstart the conversation. It might be a little hard to get the whole story out of her, but if you fake sympathy, she'll probably actually believe you. I... M mute? Something tells me I'm not going to have to fake my sympathy. Because unlike you, I'm actually a sympathetic person. So there you are, a few questions to give to her, drag the truth out of her, then tell me how crazy you think she is. Okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. So, how did this message touch her off on talking about mass murder? Passed on through the generations, the giant egg, right. Inscription, strange child. Alright, so this is just an article talking about Hyane in general. It doesn't match mention anything about murder. Hmm. Alright, let's go talk to Hyane. Whoops. Oh man, you can't press the up arrow to get the last command back. What a shitty console this is. 